Hi everyone, this is Luxtos, and today I wanted to do a quick Week Horrors video, something that has been heavily requested over the years, and I wanted to make a little guide on it and how to achieve adding sounds to Week Horrors. So this is something that I get a lot. Uh, how do I add a sound when my ability is ready, when a buff is uh, gained or is missing, or there's a bunch of scenarios where people would like to have sound and audio cues uh, on their weak horse. So it's something that's very, very neat. I don't do it by default on the weak horse because not everybody wants to have sound being played, but I will show you how to achieve it. The first thing that I can tell you is do not add sound to an existing class pack ores. So if you're using my weak horse or anybody else's weak horse, do not try to add sound directly to the spells that you want to track because the problem is every time that you update the weak ores, you're going to lose all of your sound. So what I recommend that you do is that you create a brand new weak aura that is going to contain all the sounds that you want to track for your class. There's multiple ways to do this. Obviously, if you only want to add one or two sound, creating one aura that tracks one or two buff or one or two cooldown is going to be super simple. If you want to add like a million of them, maybe you want to think about creating different ores to load under different settings just to make sure that you don't load a bunch of unnecessary things all the time. So let's say that you want to do uh, a sound layer. So it doesn't really matter what you create. It could be an icon. It could be anything. I choose to do a text aura because they're easy to not show up. So for example, I could call this uh, Warlock Custom Sounds, right? So this could be my layer for the custom sounds. I'm going to go in the display section here and remove the text. So we're going to remove this, hit accept. And now this aura is pretty much invisible. It's nothing is going to show. So nothing is ever going to show up. We're going to go into the trigger here and we're going to ask ourselves, what do we want to happen here? What is the event that we're looking for? So I'm going to show you two basic one. Uh, there's obviously going to be a bunch of different scenarios. All of the possible scenario where something can happen is going to be in here. So if you want a buff or a debuff uh, to track, it's going to be in here. You can choose if it's on the player, on the target, on your focus, on a party member. Everything is going to be in here. Uh, if you want a cooldown, it's going to be under the spell section. So if you want spell, you can do cooldown ready event. This is going to tell you when an ability becomes uh, available, when it is off cooldown, right? So this is going to be really uh, easy to do. You can also do different things like player unit. You can do your health percentage, your target health percentage. If you're trying to see if you're in execute range, you can do so many things here. I cannot go over every single scenario, so I'm, go I'm gonna go over the most popular one. One of the most popular one is gonna be a cooldown ready event, so you wanna know if an ability is off cooldown or it's coming off cooldown. Um, for simple purposes here, we're gonna go with Haunt. Uh, it's a 15 second cooldown, so it shouldn't take too long for us to validate if what we did worked out. I'm using an add-on called ID Tip, which gives me the spell ID on the tooltip. So as you can see, Haunt, here is 48181. I'm going to press enter, and that gives me haunt. If you're going to make the order for yourself, there's nothing wrong with doing this, depending on uh, what's your what client uh, of, of what language client you're using. So just type the name of the spell in your language, and it's going to show up like this, and you're going to be good to go. For the duration, uh, you can put simply one second. You just need to have this event kind of show up for a second, and you're going to be good to go. You can click exact spell match. So this is going to make sure that it is exactly the spell. This can fix some issue, but sometimes spells are going to be modified slightly. Uh, their IDs are going to change depending on certain talents. So leave it off. If it doesn't work, try to check it. Uh, that's going to be maybe one way to troubleshoot it. You're going to go into condition here, and you're going to add a condition. So when this trigger that we just created, the cooldown ready event, is active, right? When the one second event that we created from the cooldown being ready is active, set to true. What do I want to do? I want to play a sound. We're going to play a sound. You can loop it. You can play it. I'm going to choose play. And then we're going to choose a sound. So let's do bite. There we go. Simple bite. And then you can choose which audio channel you want it to be in. I'm going to do master. There we go. So now if I press my ability here, uh, as this ability comes off cooldown, 
the sound should play. So this has a simple 15 second CD. As soon as it's gonna hit the zero mark, it's going to trigger the cooldown ready event. It's gonna last one second and play the sound. Simple as that, right? So now you can duplicate this for any ability that you want. So if you want another spell to do a different sound, simply click the duplicate button that I just clicked right here, duplicate. And then you can do, uh, let's say that I wanna do Soul Rot, right? Or Vile Taint, for example. I can do this, so Vile Taint. One second, don't need to change anything, but I'm gonna need to change this here because I created a second trigger. Now it will ask you how many of these triggers need to be active for the aura to load, right? So make sure you do any trigger, any of the two is fine. Condition, we can duplicate this and then simply choose our second trigger here. So this is gonna be the trigger for Vile, this is gonna be for Haunt, right? And then they're gonna play the sound and then you simply change the sound to Blast or whatever you want. There we go. And then you're pretty much good to go. So you can create as many of these as you want. Just keep in mind that this aura will be loaded for pretty much eternity. So right now you pretty much would like it to only load maybe for your class. So maybe you would only like it to load for Warlock. So you could load maybe all three of them for Warlock for your class. Uh, maybe you want it to only be in combat. That could be a possibility. Uh, so these are all the possible features that you could do. Make sure you only load it in the settings that you are interested in and you're going to be good to go. If you add too many of these, you might want to start splitting them up into individual sound. So for example, inst instead of doing them all in one single layer here, you can duplicate this and then we can call this one Val Taint and this one could be called Haunt like this. And then we can simply modify this one to be Val Taint and we're good to go. So, and then we can load it only for the proper spell. So here we can do Val Taint and then we can do here Haunt. So this way it's gonna clean it up. So if I don't know an ability, uh, it is simply not gonna load the aura. This is not much of a big deal if you are only doing one uh, or two or three or even all the way up to 10, right? But if you have like 20 sounds, then you might wanna start splitting them up just so you're not loading a million ores at all time, right? So another scenario that you could want to do is a buff. So we're going to go to Aura, for example, and then we're going to do a certain buff. So there we go. We're going to go disable uh, some of this here. Sometimes you might hear, like when you play with this, you might end up having sound play for you because um, there we go. Because you're simply like having the cooldown ready event showing up. We're simply going to bring this back. We're going to bring back the Aura. We're going to delete the excess one that we did. Delete this one here. There we go. And we're going to change this one. So instead of doing a cooldown here, we're going to do a aura. Um, we're going to do, for example, I think we have a buff here that I can show you. There we go. So this is going to be a debuff. It's going to be Shadow Embrace, right? So what we're going to do is we're simply going to do target, debuff, Shadow Embrace. Again, I would recommend typing the ID, but for demonstration purposes, we're simply gonna do it this way. Uh, and then what's gonna happen is, do I wanna see when Shadow Embrace is on or off? So that's gonna be fairly simple. You simply go down, show on, and then you can do Aura Found or Aura Missing. So if I do Aura Missing, uh, it's going to pretty much trigger all the time because if the Aura isn't applied, then it's gonna keep like kind of annoying you. So another way that you could do it is Aura Found, and then you could do uh, something like remaining time, right? So you could go into the condition here and then you can go to remaining duration and then do smaller or equal to one. So when the debuff on the target is less than a second, it will play a sound for you. So that's a possibility. So we can do this, we can do play, and then we can do a bite, right? Uh, you could do also aura active. So whenever, whenever it is freshly applied, that could be a possibility. There's a lot of other things you can do here. We could go into the combat log, for example, and have some very interesting thing happen here. So for example, we could have spell, and then we could have aura applied, uh, aura removed, or any other kind of instance here that we want. So let's say that we do aura applied, right? And then we could do the source unit being yourself, the player, source is you, and then the destination is gonna be the target. 
right? And then we're simply going to add the spell name, or we can enter the spell ID. This should work if we do Shadow Embrace. This should technically work. And then Aura Type, uh, we can do a debuff. We're going to do a one-second event. So whenever this is applied, active here, because this is already a one-second timer when the Aura is applied. Uh, so when active true, it should play the bite sound. There we go. So as soon as the aura was applied, we got a bite sound on the target. And then if we want, we can flip this condition to be aura remove. So when this is going to get removed, the sound should play. So there's a lot of options here. You can pretty much play sounds on any event, it all comes down to understanding what is trigger and what is condition. So condition is what you want to happen. Trigger is what you want it to happen on. So as long as you create the proper trigger for your case, you can make it play a sound very easily. And the beautiful thing here is that this layer is going to stay separate from the class weak ores. So whenever you update the Warlock or any other class pack weak ores, you're not going to lose all of your sound. They're all going to be in a separate little file. And then if you're getting annoyed at a sound or something happens here, you can simply come here, load never, and disable all the sounds, and you're not going to have to hear about it uh, ever again. And then you can maybe play with it and change some settings. But that's going to be a little bit easier to manage than if you start adding sound to a million different icons, and then you're like, oh, no, okay, what is playing this one? I, I'm kind of confused a little bit. Although the Weak Aura team did a really, really good job at showcasing what is playing a sound. So you get the little speaker icon here. I still recommend that you create a separate layer specifically for playing your audio cues and you're going to be good to go. So if you have any question about this, feel free to come ask me on Twitch, on Discord, uh, or even in the comment section down below. And I'll try to answer if there's any specific case that you might need uh, direction with. So, but in general, this should help you get started. Create your aura. Make sure you create the proper trigger, create the proper condition to play the sound off of it, and you're going to be good to go. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully, this was helpful. If it was, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, come say hello on Twitch. You know, I stream every single day, and I play World of Warcraft and a bunch of other games, so feel free to come say hi, and that would make me very happy. Have a beautiful rest of your day, and I hope to see you in The War Within.